What's up, what it do, man? It's your boy, Dev the Gamer, a.k.a. Player One, the guy himself. And welcome to another episode of The Gamer's Den. If this is your first time here, this is the show where I go over video game news, tech news, and a little bit of everything else. And we start this thing off with a thing called Level One News. So before we hop into Level One News, this show is now available on... Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Amazon Music, Google Podcasts for the audio experience, for the visual experience. You have Rumble, you have Hideout, you also now have YouTube. Yes, I'm uploaded on YouTube on my YouTube channel. So youtube.com slash dev the gamer up on there as well in the YouTube. And or if you click the link in the description, you will uh, go to my new gaming channel. Kind of not new, but new gaming channel uh, on Odyssey. So Odyssey, I would assume it's like odyssey.com slash dev the gamer, whatever the case. That's the primary page. YouTube, I'm just going to be, I guess this will be an update as well. But uh, YouTube is just going to be the primary place where I upload it because, ooh, that's a lot of noise in the back. Look, the one time I record during the day, man. Hold up. All right, that was a bad Nate Dog button. <laughs> That was a bad, bad, bad Nate dog. Um, yeah, so let, let's go ahead and break this down, right? So what y'all seeing now, for everybody on the audio, Jesus Christ, it's going down outside, ain't it? Um, for everybody on the audio forum, you're not watching, so you can't see what's going on. For everybody on the visual forum, yes, you see my VR avatar, VR all-star. You know what I'm saying? I'm an all-star. You know, VR all-star. Um, Jesus. See, this is why I'm in the bandwidth now. I ain't got to deal with all this. This is exactly why I'm in the bandwidth now, man. I'm sitting here like. Hold up. All right. It seemed like my buttons is going to be a little iffy this episode. So uh, this is looking like a no buttons episode. No buttons. You know what I'm saying? No buttons. So, um, yeah, with that being said. This is my VR avatar. I would, my uh, avatar. I was gonna save this for episode 100, but my webcam is just too fidgety. I gotta fidget with it. I gotta be careful not to bump it around. And plus, I want a better quality webcam anyway, so I gotta work towards that. It's a lot of uh, pivoting and moving going on right now behind the scenes and things that I have to do. So any and all support is appreciated. You know, so if this is your favorite show or this is something you really like and you support and you rock with me and what I'm doing. Any and all support is appreciated. Every like, every comment, every rating, every subscribe, every monetary. Um, so every any any and all monetary support is, a, is everything. I'm trying to say the money right. You know what I'm saying? But um, yeah, it's all appreciated. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of pivoting going on behind the scenes just so I can bring this original content to you guys and do what I do on an everyday basis. Or not, I don't really do this every day, but you know, this is my life, man. I, I done told y'all plenty of times before. I'm going to die doing this, so... Even if it means I got to sleep in the tent outside, uh, one way or another, I'd be figuring out how to do this show, whether I'm giving y'all the visual form or the audio, both strictly or individually. You know what I'm saying? But get used to seeing this avatar. You know what I'm saying? I got my Shino Abarame, my Zetsu going on right now. So obviously you can't see my mouth move, but you see me moving over here, moving the mouse and all that. You know what I'm saying? And I'm in the background. I'm in the secret location in your bandwidth, in your internet, in the digital world. You know what I'm talking about? DG my digital masters, DG my are the champion. I told you. I told you. I told you. So, um, yeah, with that being said, we do got some news to cover in level one news. You know what I'm saying? Uh, we do got some Twitch news. We got some gaming news per usual. And um, we got some exercise news. You know what I'm saying? With a little, with a little dash of everything else in it. So let's go ahead and get into it. Make sure I am screened up. All right, I'm screened up. I'm screened up. Headline reads, Code Miku, Code Miko plans to slowly migrate to YouTube following Twitch revenue split controversy. Now, I know y'all like, first of all, he said controversy and not controversy. I know, I know, I know. And I would press my buttons, but y'all heard how terrible that was. I'm not pressing my buttons. And, and if y'all want me to prove it again, look, I'm pressing it right now. Hold up. I mean, that was a little better, but yeah, bro, no, <laughs> this ain't going to work. 
Uh, I need a I need a stronger laptop for that. So that's just on the list of many things I need to put money towards and upgrade right now. So if y'all want me to get that faster and y'all want these buttons to be consistent and all of that, then um, yeah, go ahead and support, donate. You know, all the monetary options are there on the RSS page, home of the show. So um, let's go ahead and get into it. Following Twitch's decision to con- to discontinue the 70-30 subscription revenue split for its largest creators, massively popular VTuber Code Miko is planning on making the jump to YouTube. So here we go. We have another person. They're going to sooner or later make it to YouTube. And she's big because she's VTubing, kind of like I am with this episode right now. She's VTubing, so she she does that. Obviously, she does IRL streams as well. Everybody knows, and and we even talked about her on the show as far as um you know through through third secondhand information as far as like when I talked about VTubing and stuff, I cracked my knuckles. Um, you know VTuber stuff as well. And they were when they saw Code Miko, they were expecting to see like the the animation, the avatar of her instead of the real person. So we you know she's not new to being on the show. Shout out to her. Um, you know, but the VTubing thing is really popular and it's just going to continue to become popular and it'd be a good thing if it becomes popular, you know, I mean, even more than it is, you know, I'm helping doing that right now. So uh, let's let's uh, continue on here. On September 21st, Twitch president Dan Clancy issued a statement via a blog post addressing the current channel subscription revenue split. And since this came the day after Twitch's gambling ban, streamers went into the letter quite hopeful. Well, however. Clancy delivered some pretty unfavorable news as he announced the 70-30 split allotted to some creators would be discontinued and brought back to the normal 50-50 split. The reasoning was due to the high cost of running a live streaming service. Okay, so that's not completely trash and or completely bullshit. Excuse the language for the sensitive ears. But at the same time, you know, Twitch been running for a long time. And how long y'all been running with this 70-30 split? And now all of a sudden... Like the cost them went up, like unless they they going to do like an infrastructure re overhaul or something like unless they going to upgrade the platform, add different features, make uh, more integration possible, more involvement. You know, I don't see what what they would have to switch and go 50 50 for and take more money. You know what I'm saying? And, and it's not to say that, oh, it's a bad thing, because on the business side of things, obviously you want to make more money and have more money. But when you have a product that's flying off the shelf or people are using over and over and over again, willing to buy, willing to pay, willing to use, you have to, excuse me, you have to, uh, you know, figure out a way to make that work. And with Twitch being owned by Amazon now, I don't see how they wouldn't have the funding to continue the 70, 30 split. I, I, I just don't see how, you know what I'm saying? It's just my, in my opinion, I don't, I don't see how. So, uh, let's keep on going. Keep in mind, YouTube offers a 70-30 split to all of its streamers and recently announced a plethora of other quality of life changes to the platform. With this, several streamers hinted at the possibility of leaving their home on Twitch for the seemingly more lucrative YouTube. Okay, now that would conflict with what I read, right? Or what we went over a previous episode or two, right? Where a YouTuber is going to talk about that YouTuber going to talk about switching things over and you know, 50-50 split, 45-50, 55-45 type splits. Mind you, those splits won't happen until next year, right? So no matter if you're a content creator, I'm going to tell you now, no matter where you go, there's going to be a 50-50 split. There, That's just what it is. There's going to be a 50-50 a split some way, somehow, and that's how fair the businesses are going to get. They're not going to get any fairer than that. You know, I saw a headline um, a few days ago saying why video platforms will or will not, you know, get behind or push certain people and whatever the case. And that got me to thinking, you know, like these video platforms, they are going to want to make their money. But, you know, like I said, it, I think it's dependent on what they attach to. So for every Twitch or live streaming platform, they're not attached to uh, Jeff Bezos or Amazon per se, right? They don't have, a bigger entity behind them that could fund them. And in my opinion, could continue this 70, 30 split, but now they're going to go 50, 50. So if that's what it is right now on YouTube, 70, 30 for streamers and just all content, that's great. But at 2023, that's possible to go to a 50, 50 split. 
and everybody's going to be running away like, oh, how do you do it? How do you? I want more. I don't want to. I don't want to split it 50 50. And this goes back to what I've been saying of if you're going to make content, especially like YouTube and Twitch, it's better to have a, a third, fourth and fifth stream of income coming in, because once you uh, start depending on these these platforms for your daily and frequent livelihood, that's where things get tricky. This is where you have to devote X amount of time to the platform or to just creating into your craft. And it's no longer, okay, I do this because I enjoy it. This is my passion, whatever. It's now, all right, this is my job. You you know that saying, if you do what you love, it's really not work or it's really not a job. That's cool. But at some point, the job aspect is going to take over because you know what you ultimately doing it for, you know? And, and so for me, I'm, I'm doing what I'm doing because this is my passion. You know, everything is my passion. Well, everything can't be your passion. What you make money from? Well, that's what the thing is. I'm trying to monetize this. I'm trying to, you know, get it going. So, I mean, shout out to whoever, you know, who do monetarily support and all the subscriptions, all the likes, all the ratings, all that. But at the same time, you know, I do understand that I have to do something else. So that's not no nobody else's responsibility but mine. So, you know, and, and that's just using myself in as, as an example is what I like to do a lot. Um, you know, just to show everybody else that, you know, this is something you got to think about and factor in when you want to do content creation. So right here, they have uh, Code Miko's tweet right here. And it says Twitch really wants all of us to run towards YouTube. Shouldn't you guys at least try to be competitive? So, I mean, you got to understand something. Twitch didn't have to be competitive because they were the number one streaming platform. You know, just to respond to you, Miko. Um you know, so let me go back full screen. Uh, you know, we back full VR screened up. All right, cool. You know what I'm saying? It's, um, you know, they didn't have to compete per se because they were the number one streaming platform. They had everything locked up. All right. If you want to stream, go to Twitch. So granted, I know of a plethora of other live streaming platforms where you can also stream games, but their main focus isn't games or their flagship advertisement isn't games. It's, all right, just come on here, stream, make friends, uh, date people, you know, just do whatever, whatever, whatever. Play your guitars, do this, and, you know, grow your following and get paid for going live. I'm not a big social media person. Let me tell you all this right now. I'm not a big social media person. I hate social media, right? I really, really do. I never liked this social media. Like, I remember when all these social medias first came out, and, you know, when you young, like back then, it was one thing to have a hundred accounts on everything and, you know, just to be, just to be on every single platform. But as I got older, personally, it was just like, I don't see the point of all of this because what I started realizing was most people was just using social media as a contact form. Right. So nobody like if you really think about it, nobody asks for your number anymore. They don't ask for your number anymore. They're, oh, what's your Instagram? What's your Snapchat? People don't ask for the number. People don't give out their numbers no more. People are not like, oh, I'll call you. Uh, uh, no, you could uh, FaceTime your Snapchat or you could do this. Like people don't, people don't do that no more. So once I saw how everybody was using it and how it was being used, I was like, yeah, I'm kind of not with this. And I'd rather just, you know, do what I was doing on here or do even what I'm doing now. You know what I'm saying? I make my content upload it, whatever the case, and allow fans, supporters, people who want to do business, partner up, anybody want to invest, whatever the case may be, y'all can just DM me or email me or whatever the case through these various platforms because I could be reached through one of these platforms that I do promote and or I have. So it's just like I don't, for, for Twitch, they didn't have to compete because they were the go-to. YouTube, yeah, YouTube was the go-to for content, but like I keep telling y'all, YouTube is more based on production, meaning you're producing content and creating it, literally creating. Um, damn, I didn't want to go. I did. I X'd out her uh, thing and I actually wanted to go down on something on her article where uh, she was talking about how YouTube, uh, not YouTube, how Twitch, Cole Miko, she was talking about how Twitch doesn't pay creators for their VODs. And I was like, oh, yeah. So that, you know, and that's just another thing. You know what I'm saying? That, that was just another thing that's going to push people from Twitch to YouTube because YouTube YouTuber are going to pay people for their for their shorts and just their clips in general because their clips, that's what everybody on Twitch does now. If you a content creator and you don't know much about how people are making money on Twitch, 
some of them have YouTubes, some don't. So what they'll do with their YouTube is they'll just have somebody, excuse me, I burp, they'll have somebody cut up their live stream or they'll cut up the live stream and then tell somebody, hey, edit this stuff, put effects here or do whatever. And then they'll upload it on YouTube. And then it's just a highlight of the stream of that day. So let's say August 21st was a live stream somebody had and they just chop up that whole stream. So whether that stream was one hour, two hour, three hours, they just chop up the best moments and funny stuff and things cater and tailored to their fan base that they know of that their fan base would know is funny because that they know them. So that's like if I was to do a live stream and y'all listening, and y'all tapped in to me. Y'all, I started doing that, right? And then it's like, oh, yeah, I remember that. Oh, y'all started laughing at the stuff that was funny, how I got it cut up, how I got it edited. That's because y'all know me. Y'all know me how I roll. Y'all know how I get down. So, you know, that's just what it is. But uh, the fact that they're not getting paid for their VODs and cut out certain uh, certain pieces of their content that they're cutting out from their streams, that's all in all is just going to push people towards YouTube even more. You know what I'm saying? It's just going to push them to YouTube even more. But with that being said, let's move on to the next thing in level one news. All right. I'm screened up. Yep. Screened up. Headline reads, E3 2023 reveals revamped consumer and, and business format and dates. Uh, I'm fumbling up here because I, I, I really want my buttons. But like I said, my laptop is just not that powerful to be running just to be recording, running this and that. Um, <clears throat> but nonetheless, E3 is back, 2023. If you don't know what E3 stands for, it stands for Electronics Entertainment Expo. E3, three E's, get it? Um, so if you don't know, E3 hasn't been around for the past few years, the past handful of years. And majorly due to COVID. You know, COVID came and threw a lot of things out of whack for Every business sector, everybody, consumer, uh, you know, for us as consumers and or fans, um, businesses, everybody had to pivot and revamp and rework their models and, you know, do whatever that way they could make a profit and or lose profit because they're trying. Right. So um, it seems like it's going to be coming back. But we have a new format. And right here it says an event from Repop. So it seems like we have new business things, the uh, dealings and new business partners in the mix. So let's go ahead and get into it. E3 2023, which would be the show's first in-person event in four years, will officially run from Tuesday, June 13th until Friday, June 16th. Organizer Reed Pop announced on Monday. As announced earlier this year, Reed Pop is officially taking over the running of the flagship industry event from the Entertainment Software Association, the ESA. Under the revamped format, the first two days of E3 2023, which would be June 13th to the 14th, will be reserved exclusively for business. The third day, June 15th, will become both business and consumer visitors, while the final day, June 16th, will be dedicated to consumers. So that means, um, yeah, E3 is not going to be the same. And, and, and this is just, you know, something I said, it just wasn't going to be the same, right? Like, you got to understand something. Everybody wanted, at once COVID happened, everybody want, wanted normalcy. Let's go back to the way things used to be. It's like you dealing with your girl and then she become your ex or you dealing with your dude and he become your ex. And then y'all sitting there having that conversation and somebody like, let's just go back to the way that things used to be. Nah, bro. It's not ever going like that. It's It's not ever being like that ever again. What's done is done. You know what I'm saying? So, and COVID is just like that. What's done is done. It did a lot of damage in a lot of places. But when it comes to in place, uh, you know, just in-person events, you know, some places still went on. You know, they just had new rules and regulations, put your mask on, be vaccinated, do all that. Um, and, until, you know, it's years later and, hey, you don't need none of that. You can just come as you are, you know, like this is church or something. So. Um, as far as that, right, I want to speak on that real quick. So, all right, well, my screen ain't going up. So I guess this is where, um, yeah, you know, okay, there we go. I don't know why my screen wasn't going up. Okay. But, uh, right here, it says the first two days will be reserved exclusively for business. So what I'm thinking is, well, y'all got to understand this is more than just video games when it comes to E3. So this is probably going to be business 
I don't, I mean, I don't understand this whole format. The first two days, exclusively business. Then the third and fourth day, uh, the third day specifically business and consumers. And then the last day, consumers, dedicated to consumers. So I wonder how, you know, how IGN and GameSpot and, co- and some of these other video game publications, they they do their coverage, right? Because back in the day when G4 was great, y'all know how they would send Adam or Kevin or Olivia or somebody down to the floor on E3 and they they interviewing people, they asking people questions, they testing some stuff out, they getting it in, they getting it in. It's like, what's how is this going to happen now? Because everything is going to have to be crammed within two days. When usually you could just be there day one, day two, day three, day four. So, and then mind you, a lot of, you know, Sony, Microsoft, Ubisoft, et cetera, they've been doing their own thing now. Hey, uh, we're, we'll just do our own little presentation. We'll do our own showcase. Uh, just not too long ago, remember, they just did the, uh, the Assassin's Creed thing for the anniversary of Assassin's Creed. So why would anybody go back? You know what I'm saying? Everybody then pivoted and did what they did. And now people can cater to their fan base or their player base even more, more intimately, I, I should say, because, well, we all know Ubisoft has a has a catalog and they have a lot of games, mainly Assassin's Creed. But if you want to cater and speak to that fan base and that player base, you could do that specifically. And that's what that that uh, showcase or that presentation was. Same thing with Sony, same thing, whatever else. You know, we get the state of plays with Sony all the time. Microsoft, who cares what they do? I mean, well, not who cares, but, um, you know, Microsoft does whatever they do. And, and then everybody taps in and watches it. So at this point, I don't know what consumers would do outside of just going to E3 for two days, dressed up like Crash Bandicoot, and just to say, hey, I went. Because if the first two days is business, what is that going to consist of? So let's go down here and, um, you know, read some quotables. One half of the L.A. Convention Center will be entirely dedicated to business with, quote unquote, quieter, more comfortable booths and areas to network. Repop also hopes to reopen Kentia or Kensha Hall. I don't know how to pronounce that. It looks like Kentia. That might be Kentia. I might be dumb. <laughs> Kentia Hall. That's what it looks like. A basement area not used for some years for business purposes. Dang, they about to put y'all in the basement. Dang. The other half of the LACC will be the quote-unquote spectacular E3 that you're used to. And for the first two days will also be for business attendees only. In addition, E3 2023 will feature a new dedicated meeting space where attendees can connect using the E3 app and hold meetings. Okay. Mm, excuse me i did eat before this this is why y'all hear me burping excuse me am i you know i I have manners unlike most people um okay like i said this this seems a little bit out of the ordinary but i guess it may or may not work because obviously people do go to e3 to to network as well it's not really just to you know shoot the shit and you know party all the time you know but um I mean, I know that, but to dedicate like two, two and a half days to that, that that might be a lot. I don't know. Continue on here. For consumers, Repop says the 2023 show will be more accessible for indies and indie publishers to showcase titles in the concourse hall. And it's also planning elements outside of the LACC, plus numerous game presentations will run during these days that fans can watch in person or online. Okay, so that's going to stay the same. Cool, 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 cool. Mm. E3 owner, the ESA, yeah, E3 owner, the ESA had previously experimented with consumer elements. In 2017, it sold consumer tickets, but these were limited to 15,000 places and cost up to $250. There was also minimal separation between the consumer and, consumer and business areas of the show. Repop said on Monday and wants to create an event that's better for both consumers and business attendees and partner in support with everyone announcing games around E3, irrespective of of whether they're involved officially. This potentially includes Jeff Keighley's Summer Game Fest, which held its first in-person event this summer and has said it will return in 2023 during 2023. I said tweet (laughs) three during the same window as E3. So, so that's what I'm saying, right? Cause Jeff Keighley does Summer Games Fest. You know what I'm saying? So like, like why would anybody go back? I mean, unless you were indie developer, 
E3 is still E3, you know what I'm saying? So if any indie developers is listening to me, indie video game developers, you do anything with tech and uh, electronics, E3 is still E3 in my opinion, meaning you it's still going to have a big draw, you know? And with people being deprived of going to E3 and just even being in that experience, it should have a big crowd. It, it should have a big crowd no matter what. And... You know, and and that's it. You know, so, I mean, this is cool. You know, E3 is coming back. It, you know, we'll see what, what it really is. You know what I'm saying? Um, We'll see what, what it really is and what's really going on and what the results of E3 coming back are when it comes back. Because like I said, everybody and all these different companies and brands and people, they're, they're doing their own presentations and showcases now, letting you know what games they're working on, what's going to come out in the future. And it's like... We don't need E3 anymore. We have enough money and resources that we could put up. We could create our own set. We could create our own atmosphere. And we could do our own video presentations and animations and stuff like that. So, I mean, all in all, we just have to see. We just got to see. I can't say nothing else more than that. So, let's go ahead and get into the last thing in level one news. Hopefully, I'm screened up. All right, I'm screened up. Headline read. Reads. Oh, my God. I, I miss my buttons, yo. I miss my buttons. Let's let's try my buttons. Hold up. That was bad. Let's try the game over button. Game over. Oh, okay. The game over button worked. Okay. Uh, Let's try this one. You worry about the wrong. All right. It seems like my buttons work if I have the um it seems like they work if I have it up for some reason. So if I have to have it up, I guess I'll just slide it over here somewhere. Oh no. Oh no. Like can I slide it at the bottom somehow? Okay, cool, 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 cool. Yeah, I can slide at the bottom. I can slide at the bottom. All right, um, okay, yeah. Can VR fitness replace the gym? So um, if you don't know, VR has a lot of perks and pros and cons to it, but it also has, you know, like I said, just it has promise, right? Some things seem like a yay, some things seem like a nay. And this is one of those things where it's like in a gray area. Like, is it really going to matter or is it really not going to matter? So let's go ahead and get into it. Let's not disregard VR entirely, because as we all should know, exercise is more than training for an event or getting our bodies into shape. It's a means of getting our minds into shape. Yes, I skipped all the way to the third part. I skipped away. So if you want a visual aspect that you like to read along, I skipped down here. <laughs> I skipped to the third part because um, it, I got to speed this up. So, yeah, man. So um, let's go out, go down read right here. If we exercise on a regular basis, we're more likely to sleep, less likely to, more, less likely to be stressed. Oh, my God. I cannot talk. I cannot talk. Game over. If we exercise on a regular basis, we're more likely to sleep, less likely to be stressed, and better equipped to deal with our daily trials. But the idea of quote-unquote exercise feels like a slog for many of us. After hours of work, looking after kids, and dealing with the stresses of life, it feels counterproductive to push ourselves even more. Our wind-down time, we feel, is to do things we actually enjoy, like reading, watching TV, playing video games, etc., etc. Right? So, why... The question and the topic of can VR fitness replace the gym? Because I think that's an opinion piece. And, you know, this is something we could talk about. And maybe you could talk about on your lunch break with folks or whatever the case. You know, it's, it's a different it's a different conversation, you know, and it's a different pace. So me personally, I think there's a there will be a place for VR fitness. But I don't think you will see any drastic weight loss or weight gain from it. You know, it's like when you do uh, calisthenic workouts. But it's all like intensity is a part of this. Right. So when you when you're doing calisthenics, most people just think of 
oh, it's just push-ups and sit-ups, yeah, but you could also do weighted calisthenics and add resistance. You can also, you know, up the volume, up your reps, you know, when it comes to calisthenics. So, I mean, VR is essentially calisthenics, right? But here's the thing. Remember the Wii Fit? So right here I have the Wii Fit. This was like a before 2010 type of thing or around that time where they was like, hey, you could work out on the Wii. And the Wii is reminded, this this article reminded me of the Wii Fit. So you would step on the board and, you know, you would uh, snowboard, skateboard, hula hoop, yoga, all kinds of things, you know. And they had a lot of advertisement for this. And a lot of older people liked the Nintendo Wii, mainly because of Wii Fit. You know, they was like, oh, I can work out at home and I can do stuff, but I'm playing a game. You know, same thing with the, with this article. And what I think is going to happen is just the regular output of, output of home workouts is pretty much the same you might get with VR, right? Because when you at home and you're doing your follow along video, yeah, you do your follow along video, but that's your little five, 10 minutes, 15 minutes. And then that's it. You go home about your day. And yeah, you got some activity in, you got some, you know, you got some activeness in your bones. You, you got your joints loose. You know what I'm saying? You did whatever, but that basic level of exercise is just going to keep you in functional shape at best. You're not going to lose that much weight or gain that much weight. You're not going to put on a great amount of muscle. You're not going to, you know what I'm saying? Like you're not going to turn into a superhero and or have that superhero, superwoman, superman physique over time, just working out at home, doing Wii Fit or VR fitness. You know what I'm saying? And and that's just what I did. I thought this would just be something cool to talk about. You know what I'm saying? And, and I'll put my two cents on because I just don't see it replacing the gym because that's the question. Can VR fitness replace the gym? And I say no. You ultimately are going to need weights. You're ultimately going to need a regimen when it comes to weights, weights, a routine when it comes to weights. I, for example, I have weights. So not only do I use, not you, I use and do calisthenics, I also lift weights. So I would lift weights. Like sometimes I'll, I'll record a show and then I go into lifting weights and getting into my routine. And even just to update y'all, I started a whole new routine. So I'm doing something completely new right now and it requires weights and it actually mixes in calisthenics. So today, this particular day, I'd be like torso, chest type of day. Uh, yeah, like kind of like chest, torso, shoulders. It kind of targeted a little bit of everything, but I think it's mainly chest because I am doing a routine based off of a superhero. That's as much as I'm going to give y'all. You know, superhero, villain, whatever. And this guy is cracked out. And they kind of work out as a bodybuilder, which I realized. And I was like, oh, OK, that makes sense. But nonetheless, there's some calisthenics involved in it. I got to do push ups. I got to do glute bridges. I got to do, you know, et cetera, et cetera. But then I have to lift weights and do whatever. So, you know, it, having a mix of calisthenics and weights will always be your best bet. Or if you just going for the goal of being functional and you want to be functional when you're 75, 85, 90, 95. You don't want to be walking around with a cane when you're 40. You don't want to be walking around with a walker when you're 60 and all of that. Then just any type of fitness will do you some good because your body will be used to working out, staying loose like that. Your joints is loose. Your body is loose. Your hips is open. You know what I'm saying? Health is wealth. You know what I'm saying? No matter what, health is wealth. How you going to be able to make some, uh, I mean, unless you Stephen Hawking or somebody, right? Like, unless you Stephen Hawking, you ain't got to worry about your health. You you too smart. But um, for the most of us, health is wealth. You know what I'm saying? You got to be in shape. You have to be in shape. So most definitely, um, no, nah, I don't think it will, you know, replace the gym whatsoever. But I think it would be cool and it would just be another way to do workouts at home. That's just about it. That's all, really. And that's going to do it for level one news. Uh, I'm going ahead and we're just going to go ahead and get right into it. I'm not going to give you all no little intermission stories or no intermissions while anything needs to be set up. No, 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 no. We're just going to go ahead and get right into it. So let's get into it with level two news, the main topic.
Headline reads, Microsoft is confident about the Activision Blizzard acquisition, says CEO. So, yes, we have an update, and I'm going to keep you all updated on this Activision Blizzard thing. Um, this is definitely something on my radar. So, yeah, this episode is actually going to be a very short episode for once in life. <laughs> I know y'all like, oh, man, what a short episode. I can't believe it. I had to say he because I know it's women that listen to this. You know what I'm talking about? But, you know, for all my fellas, say the right words. She all on me. Oh, man. Eh, eh. You know what I'm saying? I know y'all sitting there like. Hold up. Hey. This is crazy, man. I got to figure out a way. I got to give me a second screen if I'm going to do this. I got to get a second screen. So um, hopefully I'll be able to get that soon. That way my buttons won't be all delayed and messed up. You know, I'm in real time. You know what I'm talking about? You know, we we going to grow and we're going to get it right together. We're going to grow and get it right together. So let's get to the article. Microsoft CEO has said the company feels, quote unquote, confident about the Activision Blizzard acquisition, despite the UK government's concerns. In an interview, Microsoft CEO Satya or Satya Nadella expressed optimism about the completion of his acquisition of Activision Blizzard. I'm sorry if I butcher if I butcher your name. Quote unquote, of course any of course any acquisition of this size would go through scrutiny, but we feel very, very confident that will come out, Nadella said. As we as reported, the start as reported, the CMA Competition and Markets Authority in the UK shared its concerns about Microsoft Activision Blizzard's buyout. According to the CMA, it is quote unquote concerned that if Microsoft buys Activision Blizzard, it could harm rivals, including recent and future entrants into gaming by refusing them access to Activision Blizzard games or providing access on much worse terms, which I do agree with just for the simple fact that we've we've seen an example of the type of deals they're going to try and cut. And y'all know what I said previously before Microsoft, if y'all just going Bogart and just, hey, this is what it is. And if not, oh, well, we're going to keep them and make them exclusive. Then just say that. You know what I'm saying? That That's just all I was saying. But let's continue on here. In the same interview, Nadella said that Microsoft is either the fourth or fifth competitor in the video game industry with the Sony Group Corporation, who has also made a number of acquisitions recently, coming out on top at number one, quote unquote. So if this is about competition, let us have competition, Nadella said. Just recently, Sony... Okay, yeah, yeah. All right, yeah, we know Sony said, hey, this could have major negative implications for gamers. And adding that, it welcomes the announcement of the CMA's investigation. Okay, so so um, pretty much, if you're in the visual form, you can see it right here. I know I kind of jumped all over the place with this last little bit in the article. Um, but nonetheless, Microsoft has finally said what I said they should have just said in the first place which was what, quote unquote. So if this is about competition, let us have competition. I told y'all this was going to have to happen regardless, no matter if it's the big dogs, Sony, Nintendo, Microsoft, when it comes to console gaming, or even the cloud with Google, GeForce Now, X-Pass, uh, I said X-Pass, Xbox Game Pass, Amazon Luna, whatever. Somebody is going to have to have the power. Like if somebody is going to have more leverage than the other based on what IPs they have, based on what technology they have, somebody is going to have it. And this just confirms what I said. They're going to bogard the game. They're going to bogard the game, especially. So like if you in a race, right, it's like it's like playing Mario, uh, Mario Party or you playing Mario Kart, actually, and you in fourth or fifth place. You got the shell, bro. Let it off. You're losing. <laughs> You're losing. Let the shell go. But um, no. So they. They pretty much just said now, hey, we, we competing, so let's compete because they know this is a long game. Sony knows this is a long game. Microsoft knows this is a long game. Nintendo knows this is the long game. Everybody knows that you have to play the long game when it comes to this stuff. You have to play the long game. So what's happening is everybody is making these acquisitions. They're making the acquisitions that they need to make. And because... They're doing this, they're, but it's when they're doing it, and they're doing it now. And because they're doing it now, what y'all feeling to understand is it's going to set them up for the future. So kind of like how I said with Google and Stadia, they have the upper hand right now because they have the best cloud gaming tech 
out. They have the best cloud gaming tech out as of right now. And if that continues to be the thing, then everybody else is just going to want to license their tech, um, you know, use it, you know, whatever for their own platforms or whatever the case. And then the license wars are going to last for so long. I mean, everything is literally licensed, right? You know what I'm saying? From the NFL to the gaming to music, you know, it's all licensing at the end of the day. So it's not like license wars will ever end. It's just more of ownership, right? Ownership, like who owns what? Because once you own it, that whoever owns the big thing or the, or the important thing, that's the person with the power. So if if we just go by the article, Microsoft is in fourth or fifth, right? As far as in the gaming industry, you need you need a dog in this fight. You need a chip. You need a you need like a piece on the board that you can play with. And having Call of Duty would be that piece for Microsoft, I would assume. Having Call of Duty, having Battlefield, having, um, you know, Elder Scrolls or whatever, if that's Activision Blizzard as well. Having these games, having that much of a catalog, having that much power and control over that would give them that. You know, so I know a lot of y'all sitting here like, hold up. And I'm just like, Oh, man, you know, well, which what do you expect? And that's only because I I have insight like this. And so that's where a lot of you who are listening, you know, will have will have the benefit of insight as well, because I'm giving you all insight. And this is kind of insight to that. So you can see years down the road. Like, okay, yeah, I see what he I see where he's going with that. I see where he's going with that. So with that being said, um. You know, at least they just admitted it in some way, shape or form. Like, hey, we competing. Hey, we look, we doing this and this is what it is. Uh, like I said, personally, I don't think the deals they giving out, if that Sony deal with Call of Duty being on Sony for however many years is a good deal. What is it? Three years. That's that's not a That's not a good shake. So it just seems like and at this point, I'm going to expect Call of Duty and other games to be exclusive to the xbox platform and xbox platforms by itself it may or may not be on pc you know what i'm saying which is cool but nonetheless i mean sony there's a chance that sony and playstation platforms don't have call of duty and what that will do to the ecosystem well i mean it would definitely impact the ecosystem but it's not like microsoft hasn't had big blockbuster games And they were exclusive already. Halo, Gears of War, like outside of some of these games being available on PC, they were only available on Xbox. So PlayStation has had a plethora of games, whether they're indie or AAA, big blockbuster, and they've been getting along just fine. So as far as anything goes, the ball is in Sony's court now. Sony, they've they've purchased Bungie, you know what I'm saying? So I mean... They kind of got more of the workhorses that create a lot of these newer platforms and these newer games. They got some of those workhorses. But if Sony can acquire another studio, another developer, another company or whatever the case may be, that's in charge or responsible for a big, 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 a big game franchise or just a big popular game in general. I think it'll level the playing field. And I guess this is well, Ubisoft and Ubisoft is the only thing that comes into my mind right now. But Ubisoft being up for acquisition, being bought out, has been here and there and things like that. You know what I'm saying? It's it's been here and there. You know, so, um, you know, with that being said, you know, it's up in the air right now. You know, we just got to we got to watch things, you know, and see how it play out, you know, and and go off the information we get accordingly. You know what I'm saying? So hopefully the, it don't do this at Microsoft. All right, man, when it all blows up in your face. I don't want to hear about it. Hopefully it don't blow up in Microsoft's face. And, you know, it, this turns out good for them in the long term. But if the player base for Call of Duty goes down, if, you know, the everything, if the esports of Call of Duty go down, like if everything starts to fluctuate, Microsoft, y'all going to have to hold that L. You know what I'm saying? Y'all, y'all just going to have to hold that L because it did this. All right, man, when it all blows up in your face, I don't want to hear about it. You know what I'm saying? So that's just what that is. 
But that's going to do it for this episode of the Gamers Den. I know it's a little short, you know what I'm saying, but I got other stuff I need to do. So hopefully y'all enjoyed this. Hopefully y'all like this, the VR All-Star. Y'all, you know what I'm talking about? You know, secret, indisclosed, digital location somewhere able and ready to attack your bandwidth right now. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, appreciate y'all making it. Uh, do we have a song? Do we have a song? Let me figure out a song. Um, but I do appreciate y'all. Once again, we are on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts. We are on um, RSS. Links are in the description to these as well. Make sure y'all subscribe to the YouTube or the Odyssey page. Either one of these, primarily and preferably the Odyssey page. That would help me and that would be more support than the YouTube page. Um, but nonetheless, any page, any and all, everything is appreciated. So, um, I didn't have a song queued up, and I guess that's my fault. So, um, well, hold on. Let me see if this if this will play. If we don't get an ad on this, if we don't get an ad on this, this would be great. If we don't get an ad on this, this would be great. Okay, no, we got an ad. We got an ad. Hold up. All right, so we're going to leave out with Sauce Walker. We did it. You know what I'm talking about? So, you know, most definitely uh, we're going to leave out with this, and I'm going to catch y'all next time. Gone. Walking around with a 40 piece. I put the flavor out in them streets. I sit the top as I win this beef. I had your bitch freaking in the sheets. Who is you little niggas anyway? I buy a diamond like real estate. I buy a chopper like real estate. And I'm still buying real estate. What should I live today? Buying the ghost, how I feel today. Buying the paint, how I feel today. I hit your bitch with a fadeaway. She with my jersey like Dr. J. I'm at the math like Dr. Dre. And I got bitches like Yeezy. I'm in the snow like Jesus. Yeah. <laughs>